What is going on, Laker fans? Uh, appreciate you guys being a part of the show. Lakers Talk Daily, Wednesday here. What are we, uh, in the middle of a training camp right now? We're going to do this Monday through Friday. So quick little video, have a topic that we want to get into. Uh, encourage all of you, please subscribe to our channel. So at ESPN LA on YouTube. Uh, Lakers Talk with Alan Sliwa on uh, YouTube as well. And then, of course, all our platforms on ESPN LA, ESPN Los Angeles, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, everything else. So this is a topic that I want to get into today. And your comments and your participation is always encouraged. Did Rob Palenka do the right thing by not dealing those Laker picks? I'm talking about the 2027 and 2029 picks. Something came out yesterday that made me want to talk about this. I will read a quote from Rob Palenka when the Lakers, during uh, media day back on Monday, he addressed some of this stuff, and he addressed those picks specifically. So with that in mind, um, I want to get your guys' thoughts on if Rob Palenka has played the offseason the right way, and I'll certainly give my thoughts as well. He said, if you include the 2027-2029 picks, all your picks are gone. You have one shot to make a trade with multiple picks. So if you make that trade, and I'm not talking about any particular player on our team, but if you make that trade, it has to be the right one. You have one shot to do it. Pay attention to that. You know, I, I did Lakers talk on Monday night, and I really kind of got into that quote because I thought it was the most important thing that was said. It was Rob Palenka basically telling Laker fans, guys, we can't screw this up, that those two picks that the Lakers have left, 2027 and 2029, are so critical to them having an opportunity to one of two things either still getting a chance to compete in this LeBron window. And he, by the way, was talking about how LeBron is obviously committed to the Lakers, so it's his duty to commit to LeBron James. It's also his duty to commit to, obviously, the franchise and the front office to go try and get championship number 18. To me, that's more important than anything else. But um, obviously, Bron coming to the Lakers, the idea and the goal is to win a championship, which they've done. Now it's to win championships. Um, he's emphasizing you get one shot at this. If you screw this thing up, or let's say you trade for players out there that you don't feel are going to get you, are going to take you over the top, or at least just make you into the conversation, put you into that conversation, then not only are you swinging and missing for today, but man, you're hurting yourself for five years down the road, seven years down the road. And I think it's safe to say, nobody's looking at the Lakers. Where are the Lakers going to be in five years? Based upon the age of LeBron James, the health of Anthony Davis, based upon the draft compensation they had to give up for Anthony Davis, which is the right thing to do, obviously that draft compensation in New Orleans, those might be really good picks down the road. Those could be top five picks. So I, I think it's obviously critical, and I think paying attention to Rob Palenka, um, emphasizing how important those picks are, is, uh, is incredibly important. So this leads me to this. Yesterday, I saw this. This is um, Dave McMenamin and Brian Windhorse on the Hoop Collective podcast. The Lakers were prepared to include their 2027 and 2029 first round picks in deals for Kyrie Irving or Donovan Mitchell. The reason why I want to read that, you might have Laker fans right now. Well, yeah, that's a no brainer. Of course, they would give up those picks for those high caliber players. No one's really arguing that, but I want to explain that's how the Lakers value those picks. So whether it's realistic or it's not realistic, whether there's a situation by the trade deadline where there's a player of that caliber or an all-star caliber player, and I'm not talking about this is a top five player in the league, but maybe it's a top 20 player in the league. Um, that's how they value those picks. And I, I think Laker fans, we should get accustomed to the idea and the concept that Palenka is not going to make a move just to make a move. Or Palenka is not going to make a move for Miles Turner and Buddy Heald and lose those two first rounders. Maybe he makes a move for them and that's not the exact move. Maybe they got, you know, they give up less less uh, compensation, but you can see how much he values those picks and just how critical those picks are to the organization for this year and for 5 years down the road and for 7 years down the road. So the names Kyrie Irving, which that's not a surprise there. Kyrie was obviously rumored for a while when you thought KD was going to leave the Brooklyn Nets and you thought maybe the Lakers can't get Kyrie Irving. I think it was uh, you know clear that the Lakers would give up those two picks in that situation. Donovan Mitchell is another example. Um, 
But I think that that really just shows that all the trade chatter, all the trade conversation that was there in the offseason that's still there today, if Russ is going to go anywhere and you're attaching two picks to it, they're not trying to get back Buddy Heald or or Mike Conley or Jordan Clarkson. or That's not the type of players that they're going to try to get for it, which makes me then think that there's a good chance that you're probably going to have these guys on the roster at least until the trade deadline, um, and then you take it from there. One thing to keep in mind as well with those picks. So Lakers are kind of in an interesting situation come off season. If they play out this year and they don't trade Russ, $47 million comes off the book. And I think they'll have $30 million in change to go play in the market. Um, and just to give you an idea of the type of players that are under contracts that are around $30 million or below, that's DeMar DeRozan caliber players, Right. Uh, and I know that probably hurts Laker fans to know that because you felt like you could have potentially got DeMar at some point. Um, but it's those caliber players. It's the $30 million in cap space, plus it's the two draft picks. So I, I would say to you that this summer, Lakers could be in a good position to go really improve their team. Unfortunately, LeBron's in his 20th season, and there are a lot of other question marks of the Lakers. You can't really just kick the can down the road. Um I agree with Palenka's strategy on this. I actually really do. You do get one shot, and it has to be the right player, and it has to be the right uh, fit. And if it is, then you could actually go compete for a championship. But I don't know if those other role players are going to put you over the top or put you in the conversation with the Golden State Warriors or some of those other teams. So, Laker fans, I'm going to throw this your way. What do you think? Did Rob Palenka make the right decision by not shopping that 2027 and that 2029 pick uh, obviously, Russ would be included. Or do you feel like, no, he should have made a move. He should have went and got uh, different role players uh, because the Lakers wouldn't be sitting in their position right now with this kind of awkwardness of having Russ around and preseason only a few days away. So your thoughts below, uh, please comment. We appreciate, uh, obviously, everybody being a part of the show. Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to promote it one more time. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, I don't know where the, the channel is. I don't know when they say subscribe to the channel and then just kind of pops up magically. Uh, it's going to be somewhere here. Subscribe to the channel, ESPN LA, Lakers Talk with Alan Sliwa, um, and certainly all our other platforms as well. Thank you for being a part of the show. I'm Alan Sliwa. This is Lakers Talk Daily.